The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Trading Forex using volatility during the non-farm employment change report. My name is Gail, and I'm going to be your hostess for today. Now, before we get started, I do want everyone to read over the Nadex risk disclaimer, and this is for your protection as well as ours. And basically, anytime you're trading, whether you are trading binary options and spreads or any other instrument, there is risk involved. And you should always take that under consideration when you're entering trades. Now, for those of you that do not know me, I've got more than 15 years of trading experience. I started out with a company that programmed indicators and just absolutely fell in love with the price bars. I do specialize in price action, volume analysis, and divergence because I believe the combination is a leading indicator in the market. I'm also a frequent contributor for Stocks and Commodities Magazine, Traders World, and Top Shelf Magazine. I've also been a speaker at Traders Expo, Traders World Online Expo, and the Wyckoff Volume Conference. I'm also the author of Trading, NetX Binary Options, Keeping It Simple Strategies, The New Trader's Guide to Trading, NetX Binary Options in Spreads, as well as Trading, NetX Binary Options Using Currencies. Now, this morning, we're going to be trading a very volatile market report, and it's all about choices when you're trading these high volatile reports. Now, you have three choices, basically. You can do a biased approach. In other words, you have a bias <clears throat> to the long side, and in that case, you simply buy the binary or the spread. You could also have a bias to the short side. In other words, you sell the binary or you sell the spread. Then you have the volatility-based bias. And that means you don't have a directional bias. You do both a buy and a sell using a binary, a spread, or a combination of the two. Now, what is the difference between the directional and the volatility-based trades? Well, a directional, you choose a direction based on your technical analysis or whatever method you're using, and your risk is limited to one binary trade or one spread trade. For example, if you opted to go long and you had $20 of risk, if the binary expires in the money, you would make $80 excluding the exchange fees. Now, if it expired out of the money, you would lose the $20. Of course, that's excluding the exchange fees. So as you can see, you only have one risk, which was $20 on entry. And you would make more because a binary pays out a maximum of $100. So you still have a profit potential of $80 if your binary expires in the money. A volatility-based trade, you do not choose a market direction. Instead, you're focused on your risk. You want to limit your risk to leave profit potential but it will be lower than if you just went one side. So in this case, let's presume that you are going both long and short. In this case, if you went long on a binary with $20 of risk, you went short on a spread with $10 of risk, your combined risk is $30, okay? Now, at expiration, if the long expires in the money, you would make $80, but remember you had a $10 loss on the short spread. Does everybody understand that? 
So actually, you only have $70 of actual profit, excluding your exchange fees, okay? Can everyone hear me this morning? I have one person that is having issues with sound. Okay, evidently it would be on their side then. All right, so does everybody understand that when you're doing a volatility based, you would actually have risk on both sides? Now that means, let's say that the binary expired out of the money, the short was out of the money, okay? Well, then you would lose on both sides, the long and the short, okay? So you always look at what your total risk is on a volatility trade, okay? Now, this morning we're doing the non-farm employment change, and these are the historical moves measured 15 minutes after the release, okay? And these are averages. Okay, now in this case, you've got the Aussie dollar on average is 59 pips. The Euro dollar average is 78. The British pound dollar is 64 pips. The US CAD, 84 pips. The USD Swiss franc, 62. The USD JPY, 84. Now there's also differences in which ones I would want to trade. Okay, for example, the Aussie dollar is 59 pips, the Euro dollar 78, and the USD JPY at 84. These three I really like because of the strike width between the different strikes. Each one of these are four pips. Okay, so that means you could go you know, two or three strike prices out and still be within that range, okay? On the US CAD, okay, it is 84 pips, but the strike width on the USD CAD is different, okay? It's 10 pips on this one, okay? And it doesn't start until 8 a.m. for the two hour binaries, okay? So that means on the Aussie dollar, the Euro dollar, and the USD JPY, they all have binaries, two hour binaries that you can get into seven to 9 a.m., okay? So in this case, if the market moves dramatically 15 minutes after the market report, you've got time decay working in your favor if the market's moving in your favor. On the USD CAD though, if you enter the 8 a.m., that expires at 10 a.m. So you're not gonna have as much time decay as you do on these. Does everybody understand that? Any questions on that? Okay. Now, before we go and look at some of the trades, um, I want you to know what my website is. It's tradershelpdesk.com. And my email address is gm at tradershelpdesk.com. Okay. Now, for those that just joined us, before I start showing the Nadex demo account, I just want to remind everyone that this webinar is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as trade recommendations. Remember, you're here to learn how to take advantage of the spreads in the binaries during a high volatility market report. Also remember, a directional trade only has risk on one side. You have one trade. Okay, a volatility-based trade has risk on both sides and you could lose on both sides. Let's say the market doesn't move, okay? 
you could actually lose on both your long and your short position. Okay. Now I've already placed some volatility based spreads. Okay. In other words, I've got both a long and a short on the Aussie. I have both a long and a short on the Canadian. Okay. Notice that this Canadian expires at 9 a.m. That is not a binary. It is a spread. Okay. Then I have a long and a short using the 9 a.m. But then I used a combination on using the 9 a.m. binary versus the 3 p.m. spread. In other words, I'm short on the spread that expires at 3 p.m., but I'm long on a binary that expires at 9 a.m., okay? These are just different combinations that you could actually do on a volatility-based trade, okay? But what about if you have a directional bias, okay? Let's say that we had a directional bias to, for example, the short side, okay? You could always come in here under the Forex binaries and say, okay, I believe that the market is going to go down, okay? Now, this is real important. Always notice where the indicative is currently. So right here, it tells you it's at 106.83, okay? Now, I use out of the money binaries, okay? So that means I could come down to 106.74 and I could place a short there, okay? This would be directional. Does everybody understand that? Now, if I do a binary, because this market moves so quickly, I would also go ahead and set a target on that. Now, remember that on this particular one, we're short, okay? So I want to go down in price, okay? Now, this particular one, okay, and I'm gonna highlight it for you, it's the short, okay? and it's at 9 a.m. This would be a directional. You only have risk on this one side, okay? It's not double. You only have the risk that you paid right here, which is basically 26.50, okay? So you would either lose 26.50 or if it expires in the money or hit your target, okay, then you would potentially make 73.50 if it expires in the money or 63.50 if it hits your target. Does everybody understand that? Now that is just simply a directional, okay? Now, if you said, okay, I want to turn this into a volatility-based trade, Okay, what would you need to do? All right, if you're short here, you could look up here and say, okay, is there one that I could take that has just a small risk in case this market pops against me? Okay, in this case, you could come up to, for example, 107.10, okay? It's 14.75 in risk, okay? So if you enter this one, now you need to see, okay, how much combined risk do I have? Okay, in this case, it was 1450, it added to this position in case you didn't notice. So you've got 2650 here and you have 14 over here. That's a combined risk of about $31. Does everyone understand that? Now, in this case, because it added to this one position that I have, I'm just going to go in and modify this order to take both contracts out. Does everybody understand that?
and you do want if you're trading these with binaries remember okay you have a maximum payout of $100 okay if you have two trades for example on this one the the risk was almost $35 between the combined okay you have to subtract the entire risk on both trades okay from 100 to actually give you what you would potentially have in profit if it expires in the money okay so in this case your profit potential is still 65 okay let's say that you had $80 of risk okay on both sides that takes your maximum profit down to 20 provided one expires in the money but remember you could also lose the full $80 okay and I've had them go both ways where sometimes I make money and sometimes I lose money because these trades if you're trading volatility they are based on the market move okay what if the market doesn't move well you're gonna lose on both sides okay and that will happen make no mistake about it it will happen eventually okay it always does what works you know today may not work next week it may not move that will especially happen during the summer months it doesn't move quite as much so during the summer you might not want to do the volatility based trades okay now we don't have any yet on the euro dollar so let's go look at the euro dollar okay again always look at your indicative price index first okay in this case it's 87 is where it's currently trading now if we go back and we look at okay how much does this market move for the euro dollar it's about 78 pips okay I like to divide that number by two okay so that way I'm not too far out in this case it would be about 40 pips does everybody understand that so 88 if it moves 40 pips okay that would be 18 okay so that's gonna put you about here does everybody understand that well I also know that it needs about two strike prices to move above where my strike is okay so that puts me down here at the $19 area what if this was $40 okay if this was 40 instead of 18 then you have a choice to make are you going to enter it or just bypass the trade sometimes i will bypass the trade okay now um before i enter this i just want to reiterate this is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as trade recommendations okay now in this case I'm going to click the 2050 okay so now you can see that I'm in at 2304 now if I'm directional that's all I'm going to do I'm going to set a profit target here at 90 because I'm long okay what if I want to do a volatility based well first I'm going to look to see what I have available so I would have to come down to 2272 to enter the volatility based. That would, again would give me about $35 of risk. But I like to shop around, you know. Um, so before I do that, I'm gonna come over and say, okay, what kind of spreads are available? So right now it's 2290, okay, and I need a short on this and it would be $20 well $19 currently um, to enter this for short now what's the advantage of doing a short 
okay? The advantage of doing a short spread is that if this market were to tank, okay, the spread potentially has more room for profits. Does everybody understand that? Or let's say that, you know, um, in this case, I paid $20. Let's say that it went to $22.90. Well, then I would only lose $10 instead of the full $20. But you also could have looked at the 3 p.m., okay? You know, sometimes these will have the same amount of risk. I did a good example of that on the USD JPY. Notice that both of these had the same price. What's the difference? This one has 39 minutes. This one has until 3 p.m. Do y'all understand that? So you kind of have to shop around and see where the best deal is. Sometimes I use a daily, okay? It's just a matter of comparing which one is the best one for me, okay? And again, the one thing that you have to remember when you're doing these is a directional trade will only incur risk Oh, one trade. That's your directional, either long or short, okay? You have more profit potential and you have a lower risk because you're only on one side of the trade. If you're doing a volatility based, then you have risk on both sides of that trade. That takes your profit potential down, but it also increases your risk, okay? Any questions? And remember, I mean, I have several trades on right now, but remember anything that is US dollar based is potential. You know, sometimes I will look at the USD Swiss franc. If I can't find anything on the USD JPY, I'll go over and look at the Swiss franc. It moves slower, okay? For example, the USD Swiss franc 9610, okay, that would not be a good place to sell because price is trading at 9512. I would want to sell this one down here and it only has, for example, $9 of risk, okay? And then I could come here and do this side for $12, okay? Notice that the risk on that one was lower. Why? Because the USD Swiss franc does not move as much, okay? So the volatility is a little bit lower, but your risk is also a little bit lower too. The USD Swiss franc only moves on average 62 pips compared to the USD JPY, which does 84. Again, shop around which one is best for your risk tolerance, okay? Any questions? If you get out early before expiration, is the profit less even though you're in the profit zone? Um, on a binary or a spread? Because the spread, it depends on where price is at. On a binary, remember, you have a maximum payout of $100, okay? So in this example, I've got a profit target at 90, okay? So I'm giving up $10 of profit potential. That's what I'm giving up, okay? This is the maximum. You cannot make more than $100 on a binary, okay? So if you put in a profit target, you would have to subtract that from 100 and this is okay, I'm giving up 100. 
on the short side, you have you start at 100 and then it goes down, okay? Because you're expecting price to go down. So in this case, it's the same as if I had set a $90 profit target. The only difference is I'm giving up $10 because I set my target down here at $10. So that's what I'm giving up, okay? Now, if you, if it remains until expiration, okay, then that's when you get the maximum payout. Does that clarify the answer for you? And you know, during a market report, anything can happen. Um, there's, you know, it's all in the way the investors see the market report results, okay? And that's what makes it hard to trade is that anything could happen, okay? Now, in this case, I've already marked on this chart where, you know, my spreads are and where my binaries were, okay? Uh, you thought it was based on the market price minus expiration um, I don't really understand your answer there. A binary, uh, the maximum payout is always $100 at expiration if it expires in the money. But you do have to subtract your risk from that to determine what your profit was. Now, in this case, this yellow line that is my floor and my ceiling price, okay? This is where my premium was when I entered the short spread. The blue line is where my premium was when I entered, and the green line, it represents the binary that I did on that before the webinar started, okay? Now, this should not be construed as trade recommendations. This is an educational session, okay? I know we had some people join us and I want to make sure that y'all understand this is educational. Now, we have the market report coming out in about three minutes and typically, immediately when this market report is released, you will get the reaction, okay? It's not unusual at all to see all of these values go blank, okay? It's because the movement was so volatile, you know, nothing can keep up with it. You'll even see on the chart itself, the chart won't keep up with the movement. It'll be just a couple of seconds where you don't see anything. You don't even know where price is. That's totally normal with this market report. It is released on Fridays, the first Friday typically of every month at 8.30. This was an unusual month as they released it on the second Friday. That does happen occasionally, so always check to make sure when the market report is coming out. And typically you'll start seeing it now. They'll kind of push it in one direction right before the market report. Sometimes it will continue in that direction. Sometimes it won't. Now also, um, if you wanted to set targets on these spreads, you could also do that. Okay. For example, on this Aussie dollar, you see that the floor is at 7710. Uh, I'm sorry, 7700. I could come in and put a target at 7715. Remember, I'm short on that. On this one, I could come in and I could set a target at 7885. Okay. 
Now, what that does is if the market moves really quickly and there's sufficient buyers or sellers, then you might get filled on these. Same thing with the binaries. You could actually get filled or not filled. You know, I've, again, I've seen it both ways. I always do monitor the position to make sure that I'm watching it so that if I need to get out early, then I could do that. And you can see that it has started to move. It initially went down, now it's trying to go up. I mean, this is the way the market report works. And we have not had the extreme movement that I've been anticipating. But again, that can happen. That's why it's important to remember, you know, whatever risk you have on right now, you could potentially lose all of it if this market report does not move as you anticipate. Especially when you're doing the volatility trades because you have double the risk. You have a long and a short, not just a directional. And remember, we were expecting 84 pips. So far, this has moved from 74 to 02, okay? Nowhere near what we have anticipated. They're deciphering the report. Is it good or is it bad? Do they like it or do they not like it? That's what it's all about when you're trading these market reports. How are they going to react to the market report? That's what you're trading. If we go over and let's say we look at the Euro dollar, okay? You can see that it's moved from 22.97 down to 22.73. Definitely not an 80 pit move like we anticipated, okay? And this is where you can lose on both sides because you have both sides of the market. You have both long and both short, okay? If we go over and look at the USD Swiss franc, remember that one was only a 60 pip move that we were anticipating. And basically you've had a 20 pip move. How long does the volatility last? I don't know. Um, That's not an easy question to answer because it depends on what type of volatility that you see. I've seen it only last for one 15 minute bar and then the market goes dead. Or if the number came out and they really liked it, it could last for 30 minutes. Then again, if they really didn't like it, it could last for, you know, an hour. I measure a 15 minute bar. And most of these are only until 9 a.m. Okay. And you can see that 9 a.m., 9 a.m. So in this case, the volatility has to happen within a 30 minute period. Okay. If it doesn't, well, you just lost 
on all of these trades that expire at 9 a.m. Let's say the volatility doesn't come in until 9.30. Well, you just lost on all of these trades. And that is the reason that risk has to be acceptable when you're trading, okay? If you can't accept that risk, you should not be in that trade. And that's the really cool thing about binaries and spreads. You know what the risk is going into the trade. It will affect gold. Uh, gold moves 133 ticks, usually on this market report. So yes, it is one that is affected by it. And again, you know, from here to where it's at right now, you've had a 25 pip move. Remember the average is I think 64 on this. So it's underperforming today. And this is where you have to realize when you're doing these volatilities, underperformers are gonna cause you losses, okay? Uh, inverse to the dollar, it would be the Euro dollar, the Aussie dollar, the British pound dollar that are available on Nadex. And notice how this is, this premium is moving. If you really watch this premium, you can see it jump from 75 back down to 65. That's the volatility coming in on the market. If we go over and look at the Euro dollar, okay, you can see that the Euro dollar is actually in profit right now, okay? Will that continue for the next 22 minutes? That's the question. Because sometimes you'll need to come in here and you'll need to exit early, okay? It's better to take $40 of profit than let that go against you. Do y'all understand that? It's like if you're walking down the road and somebody's offering you a 20 and you say, oh no, I'm gonna wait because I'll get 60 on down the road. You know, right now you have a profit potential, but this can always go against you, okay? And you need to remember that when you're trading. You can have a spike up and a spike right back down. And this is a great example where you're just not getting the movement that you anticipated. And if you count these, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 trades. Now remember, this is the key. If you were doing directional, would you have 14? No, you would have seven, okay? Um, total right now, you've got about $200 of risk. If you add these two, it's about $200 of risk. Okay. So today you might lose 200 because you were trading volatility, not directional. So your loss is going to be 200 
whereas if you had done directional, even if you had lost, it would only have been 100 versus the 200. This is where you have double the risk on volatility-based trades. And you can see on the USD JPY from 05 down to 74, that's a 30 pip move. And we were anticipating 84. It hasn't even moved half of the average. Do y'all see that? Now, any questions? I think today was a great day to actually understand when you're trading volatility trades, you have risk on both sides and you can lose, okay? And you see that this morning. Whereas with a directional, you, would, you could still potentially lose but it would not be to the extent of a volatility based trade, especially like this morning, it hasn't moved. Okay. And this is where you will get into trouble when it does not move. Any other questions? Okay. If you do not have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar. As I said, this is not moving in our direction. So this is one that you can actually lose on both sides. Okay. All right. Everybody have a wonderful day trading and I'll see you at the next webinar.